Guys, look at me. Okay, so today we're going to harvest some honey from the Rhode Island apiary. We're going to use the crush and strain method just to give you a sense of where we are in these hives. There they are. The hive on the left is full of Italians that we introduced as a nucleus colony this past spring in um, early May. And the hive on the left is the Russian colony. Uh, those are Russian bees that we created a nucleus colony out of with our uh, April 15th, um, our April 15th uh, installations. And we brought them up uh, in uh, uh, early May as well. So both colonies are thriving, but I think we've got some real harvestable honey out of the uh, Italian hive that we're going to try to pull a couple of frames and make a couple of quarts. So our access to these hives is a little difficult. We have to go through this window and then they sit on this flat roof. And at least they're in the shade right now. Hopefully they'll be a little calm. These are the hives that pinged me a few times last weekend when I went to go inspect them. So I'm, I do uh, have a smoker up here in Rhode Island now. I'm going to hit them with some smoke. So I'm going to pull a honey frame out of here and see how it looks. So there's a frame of honey that's nearly fully capped and ready essentially for harvest. We're going to harvest this one. It's got some bees on it, no big deal. We're just going to scrape them off. And then I've got this bucket here that I've cleaned. I'm going to take we have this paint scraper that we're using to scrape the wax off the plastic foundation. Can, are you getting inside in the bucket, Eddie? And so it comes off really easily. That's why I like these these um, uh, these frames with the plastic foundation. It just scrapes right off, and we just pop these frames right back in to the hive, and hopefully they will build them out again. Certainly they will strip the honey off of them and redeposit it. And what you end up with, Maddie, why don't, you, why don't you put that in there? What you end up with after three frames of, uh, three medium frames of um, honey is a big mess of wax and liquid that we will then process with the crush and strain method. Dad. So Maddie is in there with her clean hands, her impeccably clean hands. It's not about stirring, Maddie, it's about crushing. Right. So just keep crushing. What you're trying to do is crush all the cells that hold the wax, uh, that hold the honey, so it gets released. And then, oh, don't do that. Just leave that in there. Okay. I was thinking you could use that to help break stuff up, but I don't. It doesn't look like you need to do that. Mm -hmm. So break it. Keep breaking up into small pieces. And then what we'll do is we'll strain out the wax, and what we we'll left with is delicious, unfiltered honey. No, you got to do all of them. No, it's for AJ, it's AJ's turn. Okay, so what Will is, and AJ are doing are drilling holes. These are quarter inch holes in the bottom of an cl impeccably clean bucket. And this will be our initial strainer or sieve to take out the big pieces of um, wax. Okay, here's our setup. Maddie, why don't you describe our setup? Um, well, this is where we kept all the honey and um, everything else and there wait wait so that's where you did the that's the bucket in which you did the, the crushing the crushing yes. with your hand right mm -hmm. what's the bucket below um, this is a homemade 
uh, colander type thing, so um, all the honey will drip through and um, through the um, holes that are in the bottom. So it was sort of our primary strainer, right? And um, there is another colander right here, so just to get the little bits, and then this is where all the honey will end up. Great. So let's see how much we. So um, what you need to know is this is going to take a, this process is going to take a while because honey is thick, and so we just let this sit like like this for a little while while the um, wax drains and the honey drains out of it. So after crushing this through the primary stra uh, strainer that we built, and then this colander, you have what looks like porridge here, which is essentially um, just the last bits of wax. What we'll do is we'll take this wax out, put it on a um, on a sheet pan and then put it near the hive and the bees will uh, pick away all the honey so that's good and they'll redeposit it and then we've got a rather large bowl full of honey uh, which we don't know how much we have yet um, but what we're going to do is we're going to strain it as we pour it into bottles and we'll know then how many uh, pints of uh, honey we get out of three medium frames so now we're taking the uh, primarily filtered honey and we're pouring it through a, uh, another sieve into these pint jars. These are uh, pint sized mason jar, uh, uh, ball jars and we're going to see how many of these we get. It's been a little messy here but that's okay. So Maddie, how long did this take would you guess? About 10 minutes. Right, because I mean we did have to do a lot of waiting but it didn't require a lot of work on our part. And did we get stung? Uh, you did. I did, but that was just because when I was harvesting the bees. Um, otherwise, it's, um, it's been, it was pretty harmless. Okay, so from three medium frames, how much honey did we get at the end of the day? We got five and a half jars of honey. And these jars are how big? One pint. Uh, that's right, so they're pint sized jars. Um, so roughly each frame provided us with two pints of, um, or one quart, the equivalent of one quart of um, honey. And that's a pretty nice harvest for just a few minutes work on our part, a lot of work on the part of the bees. Um, but I think that this proves out the crush and strain method is pretty easy to do and pretty cheap. I would like to get an extractor at some point, but in the interim this seems like a pretty effective way of doing it. And if you look at our honey too, you'll see that it is, it looks a little cloudy, and that's because we did not filter it, all we did was strain it. And so there are Lots of nutrients in it, like pollen and a little bit of beeswax, but it still tastes terrific. And that's what we need to do for crush and strain. Thanks very much, Squirt. Mm -hmm.